Hello, I'm Megan Moran, canola and edible bean specialist with Omafra. I've created a short video on diagnosing the causes of canola changing color. The video is focused on winter canola in the vegetative stages in the fall, but many of the details are also applicable to spring canola. So we'll look at the reasons canola turns purple, uh, some reasons why it may turn yellow, and also the cause of the white flash we sometimes see on leaves. I hope you find this useful. In this field, there's a fair bit of purpling on the leaves and leaf stalks. Purpling can be a sign of nutrient deficiencies or herbicide injury, but it's really just an indication of plant stress. I'm fairly confident this grower has applied the appropriate nutrients and knows what herbicides are safe because he's a long time spring canola grower. So I don't want to jump to any conclusions. Certainly these plants have had some stress and you can see mechanical damage to the leaves and leaf stalks. In fact, there was hail here that caused that damage followed by cold weather, which can also contribute to purple coloring. So it's fairly clear what's happened here. There has been hail. These photos were taken in a field of winter canola that had a low percentage of plants that were stunted and purple. So you can see in the photo on the left, at the bottom of the photo is a smaller purple plant. And these were found sporadically across the field. They have what's called wire stem. You can see in the photo on the right why we call it that. There's a very skinny stem or root showing at the soil surface. And that plant will not survive. It's caused by Rhizoctonia solani and sometimes Fusarium species. The field was seeded in wet conditions at a depth of two inches, so very deep seeding depth. And this is a higher risk scenario for development of wire stem. The field did have a low rate of emergence, but ultimately it was enough plants to keep the field. I was called out to this field because of the purple coloring that we're seeing in the winter canola. And it is November now and plants will turn purple when they get cold. So a little bit of purpling on the leaf tips is fairly normal. And uh, we'll see some purpling on the stems or leaf stalks because of that cold weather. But in this field, we're actually seeing lower leaves are turning yellow and orange and purple, all different colors. And so I think this crop is actually hungry for nitrogen. Um, they had about 25 units of N applied in the fall and we've got quite a bit of growth here, uh, about six to eight leaves. And I think what I'd like to see is 40 units of N applied in the fall. And that'll give the crop what it needs uh, to make it through this, these vegetative growth stages. Now I don't think that this bit of nitrogen deficiency will impact overwintering. Uh, we're at a good stage here for, for overwintering. Got a nice root on the plants, and this is one of the smaller plants at the five leaf stage. Um, I think it'll do just fine through the winter and we'll get uh, the bulk of the nitrogen on in the spring. Um, but again, I'd like to see a little bit more nitrogen in the fall and I think this grower will do some test strips next go around. These photos are an example of sulfur deficiency. This is actually spring canola from some small plot trials where there was zero sulfur applied. So you'll see the backs of the leaves are very purple. There's purple around the leaf edges and some mottling or yellowing between the veins. There's also cupping of the leaves, which we often see with sulfur deficiency. And there's also stunting here. These photos were actually taken in July. The plants were not purple early on. That coloring came on later and the plants could not grow through that lack of sulfur. Most growers know canola has a high sulfur requirement and there's typically some sulfur available in the soil. So we don't see these symptoms very often in the early vegetative stages. Herbicide can also cause discoloration of canola, but there should be other indicators that a herbicide is at play. On the left is a photo of Aragon injury. Aragon was applied after wheat harvest and before planting of winter canola. And you can see the plants are very purple, the cotyledons are very purple, and the plants are also very tiny and they never really grew beyond this size. Aragon has a 10 month recropping restriction to canola, so we can't really use it in the year that we're planting canola. 
On the right is another example of herbicide carryover of a group two product that was applied the previous year. Most group two products have a 22 month recropping restriction to canola. You can see the field is highly variable with all different growth stages, and this is very common with herbicide carryover. And the injury is also most pronounced in a sandy corner of the field that had a low pH and was scheduled for liming. So differences in response by soil type are another good indication of herbicide injury. Here is one more example of some discoloration caused by herbicide in a winter canola crop in this case. You can see some plants have a bit of a yellow or white flash on the leaves. Uh, that's probably because of the grass control herbicide or the surfactant in that herbicide, but um, that kind of damage I do not is not a problem and that shouldn't affect the plant or its growth or its overwintering ability. And as you can see, uh, very little damage overall. Um, we do see that white flash sometimes. Nothing to be concerned about, at least in this case. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me anytime, and I look forward to seeing you in person in the future.